goodbye. The other swimmer is running out of time. I knew I had to get into the boat ramp myself. And in that time, I couldn't locate him. So I'm picturing that they're going to be in a cave dead. It's glitch. Oh, it's no glitch. way. The no trainees. way. The trainees. It was kind of like, oh, hang on here. The trainees could have this. Watch out, old boys. 1 p.m. And Harry paddles out to Ben Buckler to catch some waves during his lunch break. It's extremely important to have exceptional skills out in the ocean. So when the waves do come up, I have to go out there and train. When we get big waves here at Bondi, the rips pull so hard, it turns into a real dangerous beach. And on this particular day, I was out in the big waves and I look across at the rock shelf and I notice two scuba divers. Conditions are deadly enough for swimmers, but divers, strapped with tanks and equipment, are destined for disaster. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I knew I had to do something. I was screaming at it. Get off, get off, climb up the rock. Quick, 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 quick. Go, 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 go. In front of Harry's, the two divers are hit by a giant wave. And threw them so hard into the back of the rock face that I heard the scuba diving tanks go ping. Harry's can't see the divers who have disappeared in the white water. Without a radio, he is unable to communicate the emergency back to the tower. I was screaming up at the rocky shelf above, call the lifeguards, call the police. I knew if we got a triple zero call, that it'd get back to the lifeguards too. Hello? Something's happened on the rocks, Harry. Just call someone to get the lifeguards down there. North Bondi? Yeah, North Bondi. Harry's just going to stay on the rocks. We had no idea what was going on. We didn't know if it was in the water, if it was on the land, if it was a resource, if it, someone had been rescued. We just had no idea what was going on. So Harry's now, I can't see anything. Okay, was he hurt or was it sort of someone else, do you think? Hang on. Okay. There were just phones ringing everywhere. The police, Ambos, Surfcom, everything's going on. Okay, just stay on the phone for me if that's all right. Yeah. For all this to be happening, this has got to be proper. Harry's spots the divers being washed over rocks. Go, 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 go. Come down, give me a hand. The ocean owned them. There's nothing they could do. As the massive wave recedes, there's no sign of the two scuba divers. I knew I had to get into the boat ramp myself. And in that time, I couldn't locate them. So I'm picturing that they're going to be in a cave dead. We don't really know the, like, the intricacies of it at the moment. I've got a, a young girl on the phone to me and she said that Harry's is, um, yeah, so has yelled really for nice. help. Before I knew it, there was emergency services. Everybody was turning up. Yeah, it was on. Harry's is the only lifeguard who knows the last location of the two divers. We could see a rescue board tucked up against the boat ramp. That's when I got in the buggy, got the defib in there, and I drove along the road and around the houses. Harrison heads to another access point. I saw two guys sitting there in wetsuits and dive tanks and two cops just interviewing them. <laughs> After trying their luck entering the surf on one of the biggest days of the season, the two divers are lucky to be alive. What are you doing scuba diving today? Just checking it out, man. My eyes were just going from them to the 10-foot surf and rocks, back to them, then back to the 10-foot surf and rocks. And my brain just couldn't piece it together what I was actually seeing. A big set comes in, knocks Colin over, and the lifeguard is like, get out, get out, get out. And then we start turning around, another wave comes, knocks me over, and then by then, we're pretty much just like, like face planning the against the rock. Harry's finally makes it ashore. You know, I had this immense amount of frustration and anger in me, thinking how could they have done this to themselves, and then there was a the sign of relief that, you know, they are alive and they're out of harm's way. That's 20 years working down here, and I've never seen that. There's a, it's like the situation you two are in. I've lost my voice from screaming. And I, like I've seen that 10-foot wave hit you guys. It's just like a pinball. 
whew, across the rocks. And I, like I know how easy it is to lose a life, and that, that's as close as you're going to get. The incident has cost emergency services thousands of dollars. I can't even begin to comprehend what they were thinking. Let alone if those guys got in the water, they wouldn't have come out alive. There's so much water moving, you wouldn't even be able to see your hand in front of your face. Let alone being able to see Dory or Nemo or... What's Nemo? Bruce. Death? Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> the rip at North Bondi runs out to sea like a rapid once the swell gets overhead high. Well, it's a big swell and it's pushing in there. It's very dangerous. The swell today is three storeys high and the rip is in overdrive. All that water needs to come back out to sea, so it finds that weakness along the rocks and it pushes out and that's where people get into trouble. There's a couple of heads in that north corner. I'll come up to see right against the side. Two people are being swept out in the torrent of water just off the rocks. You compare it to grand final day for a lifeguard. You know, you do the training during the week, try and keep fit, you go for paddles. Then when that swell comes, you have to do a rescue. You kind of have to put all that training into practice. Yeah, you have to go out. Corey paddles past the first swimmer and heads for a woman further out. There's one more head out there, but... I thought they had a board. There's one more head deep in the corner. As Corey approaches the swimmer, he gets a surprising response. The woman is unaware that she would likely have drowned if left to swim back against the rip on her own. Yeah, just that swimmer in that corner, you okay, mate? Nearby, the other swimmer is running out of time as he's dragged out to the huge waves at Ben Buckler Point. Boys, I think I'm out here as well. He's obviously seeing something that went oh, up. There was so much water moving, and even though I had flippers on, there was just, there was no power against that rip. It was just charging out. Oh, cool, he nailed it. He nailed that one, all the way. Passing Corey on the way out. He looks knackered. Harrison gets to the second swimmer. He must catch a smaller wave before he's cleaned up by the monster sets coming around the point. Oh, they're on one now. Yeah! Oh, master. The guy that I had to take back to shore was, you know, a fit looking bloke, had flippers on. He still found it hard, so it goes to show you, you know, if you had someone that had no ocean experience and couldn't swim a stroke, it's the risk before disaster for sure. That was borderline. I didn't want to push it. You've got to have respect for the surf. I think that's the key. Know your limits. It's pretty powerful out there today. It takes about two seconds to get out, maybe two hours to get in. There's no room for pride out there. So every year we host a lifeguard challenge. You know, the boys started it probably 25 years ago and, it, and it's still going strong today. So I'm setting up the course. We've got our teams race. I've teamed the slow guys up with the fast guys. And uh, I reckon it's going to make a really exciting race. Each team is comprised of two people. The rules are simple. Both team members each do a swim leg and a board leg. They take it in turns, like a relay. The team that completes the course first wins. Yeah, as soon as it was ready, set, go, everyone put their game faces on and it was on. Three, two, one, go! Oh, 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 oh. Boys are off and racing. Dino in front. Ryan and Glick, yeah, the Gromps are two Gromps. Yeah, yeah, that's not a bad team, mate. Eh? For Bondi's trainees, there's no better way of proving themselves than by beating the big guns in the lifeguard challenge. The best way to impress myself to Hoppo, the boss, is to do my absolute very best and cement my place into the lifeguard service. I tell you what, the pace on that race was so fast. Like, these guys wanted it more than anything else. The first leg, we went around the cans and as we're coming in, 
Everyone was trying to just get as far in because if something comes, you want to be on it. Many of the lifeguards are former Ironmen, champion swimmers and ex-pro surfers. The trainees have little chance against these veterans. But someone forgot to tell Glick. Glick got a wave straight away on the board and everyone's going, where did he come from? It's Glick! Oh, it's it's no Glick. way! The no trainees. way! The trainees just come through on a wave. Trainee Glick has caught everyone by surprise coming out of the water first. Go Glick! But here Go they come. Glick. At the end of the board leg, I was very surprised that we were out in front. It was kind of like, oh, hang on here. The trainees could have this. Watch out, old boys. Glick's teammate, fellow trainee Ryan, has the chance to cause the biggest upset of the season. Uh, if the trainees, Ryan and, and Glick, win this, it'll be pretty much unbelievable because I'll be beating some big names, especially Ryan. He's fresh as, so I'd like to see him win. I did have a couple of looks back as I was swimming and I saw that the guys were slowly catching me and I was worried about him getting a wave. And then I think Maxi and Azza actually got a wave and Azza landed on top of me. Oh, no way. <gasps> oh, 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 Despite the collision, Ryan holds his lead. Yeah, Ryan. No I've held the lead, now it's back to Glick again and get ready for the final leg. At the halfway point, the trainees are wearing out the rest of the service. You look at the boys resting now, they've all got their hands on their, on their knees, they're all taking in the big breaths. As they just swam past me like I was standing still. Glick and Ryan hold their lead, but Whippet and Reedy are hunting them down. We weren't too far behind when I hit the water for that third leg, the swim. Yeah, I just put the head down and started kicking as hard as I could. Well, Whippet and Reedy was a, it was a late team, eh? That wasn't originally a team. Whippet's very talented. He's a jack of all trades, master of all of them as well. <laughs> He's the most competitive human on earth. Hey, Whippet trails by 40 metres, but displaying his surf skills, oh, it's Whippet! he passes Glick on a wave and puts his team into first place. Where did he come from? Where He's a freak of nature, mate. Come on, Whippet, you fat idiot! <laughs> Hitting the water, Ryan's team has dropped back to third. But there's still a full leg left to recapture the lead. If we had lost it from there, it would have been hopeless. It would have been the worst performance ever. Oh, oh. Reedy's claimed it. Oh, oh, double, stop he's it. claimed it. Stop it. Whippet and Reedy in front, so that makes Glick and Ryan uh, the trainees in second. Not first, but you know, second's still very, very good. It's just a testament to them of how, you know, how fit they are, one, and just how hard they try and how much they want to prove to themselves that they're, you know, an asset to the service. They've done a very good job. Down here, boys. Yeah. They've done a really good job. With the trainees coming in second, it's, uh, it's great for the team, pushes everyone else, and it's a great motivator for everybody. Boys smashed it. It's a massive effort. First year on the job for, and second year for Glick, so... Yeah. Smashed it. It's good. Good to see. Did very well. Still stoked for a second. I didn't think we'd get the podium. We're laughing, yeah. It's good. <laughs> Definitely showing that they've got the ability to race, but lifeguarding's a lot of different things. It's not just being fit in the water, it's watching the water. So, you know, they've still got a lot to prove, but that fitness-wise, that was great. Picking up second place puts the two trainees in good stead with the bosses and will help their dream of becoming fully-fledged lifeguards.